way back in 2005. That's it. Over the years, little really changed in terms of design and appearance. And that's the case about the 2024 Swift as well. Little has really changed. The car is more of a revolution than an evolution. Welcome to Prime Media Review. Today we are doing a walk around video of the new generation Suzuki Swift. and ultra switch form on the new generation swift well it comes to design as i said letters has really changed in the new generation swift and up front it's pretty much distinct and identifiable as a swift yet you get all new headlights with led projector lamps and an led drl this time the swift has got all led so you get led headlights led turn indicators led fog lights and led tail lights at the back as well you also get a new distinct grill which is very soft and black looks really nice and well, there's an element over here that kind of mimics an air vent but it's really a fake unit and yep, that's pretty much about the front of the Suzuki Swift. Talking about the side of the Swift and yet as I said not really much has changed in terms of design. You have the same silhouette, you have this lovely waistline that starts from the front and disappears into the back. You got bigger windows now but whether that translates into more space on the inside, Jury will find out later. Another thing though, you do get 16 inch alloys as standard, this car is a lower spec trim so you get the white alloy wheels, the top spec ultra does get the polish finish which we will show you later in the video. Talk about the rear of the Swift, again nothing much has changed but you do get a new tailgate and LED tail latch at the back as I said, for a smoked effect with this LED bar on the inside looks really great and it says hybrid because this time the Swift comes with a hybrid system and got a nicely shaped bumper as well. Another nice touch is the spoiler on the top which is a standard addition to the Swift as well. So that's about the exterior of the new generation Suzuki Swift. Do you really like the design of this car or do you like the previous generation? Do remember to comment in the comment section below. Let's jump on the inside and check out the interior of the new generation Suzuki Swift. It's a fabulous sight on the inside of the new generation Suzuki Swift. Yet, a lot of bits are new. Nothing really much has changed, but it is all new dashboard on its own. First of all, I like the layered finish, but you got plenty of scratchy plastics all over. Um, the steering is really great, and you got tinted telescopic uh, adjust for the steering wheel. You also got a uh, colored instrument cluster, which is analog and really with drive meter reviews, word of honor. Touch screen is a 9 inch infotainment system, it comes with DAB, radio, wireless, and auto, Apple CarPlay. Got a little central console here for your AC controls. Um, the only little disappointment here, however, are these AC ones. They are a bit small and they look out of place. But overall, the central console is more driver focused. So that's really a nice touch. Got a little storage area here for your Ford cup holder. That's your gear selector. That's your manual handbrake. And you got heated seats for the driver and the passenger. Not a nice touch. The glove box is really huge. You can store a lot of stuff on the inside. And yep. Seats on this whole are very comfortable, but you got manual adjust for your seats. I would have liked if Suzuki had to go automated. Um, you got a, you also got a manual inner rear view mirror, so you just got to hit a button. Um, the exterior mirror is small, but you do get a really great view out of the car. And yep, overall, the front seats are quite comfortable. Good, you have great view out of the car. You can see a lot. You got good amount of headroom, good amount of legroom. The footwell pedal also is not really cramped, it's really spacious enough. Um, overall, the cabin of the Suzuki Swift is a really pleasing place to be. Um, sun visor has got a mirror. A bit of struggle to open the mirror on the sun visor, but then I can see myself, I look really handsome, though I do miss a light, so I don't really know how will I look at night. And it's the same for the passenger as well. So that's about the cabin of the new generation Suzuki Swift. Let me know what you think about it in the comment section below. I'm going to jump in the back now and check out the space on the back. So the back seat of the Suzuki Swift. First thing, you got ample amount of headroom. Slight cave in here from the roof at the side. So three people will not really fit comfortably. Got a bit of lack of tie support for tall people. But your legs really fit well under the seat. And especially my long shoes. Leg room is good overall. Um, Got a bit of a scoop out here in the seat, so it's really great. Um, but that's pretty much it. Um, rear AC vent. You don't get a rear AC vent. You don't get a dropped out armrest. Um, you don't get a USB charging socket. It's really a bit, a bit of a disappointment here, I would say. But 
If you were to fit a third person, you were slight ties up position, but on a short journey, it would really be okay. A longer journey is not really a place to be, I would say. That said, you do have a very big window on the Suzuki Swift area, so it's really great and you get a good overall view out of the car. But you know one thing, the Suzuki Swift was never meant for the back seat. It's always meant for the driver's seat, meant about enjoying that overall thrill and experience and it scores well on those fronts. How much does it really score on the space on the boot? Let's go and check it out. The only other addition I do see at the rear is the little bottle holder over here so you can really keep your bottle holder. You don't even get a phone holder at the back. So let's about the back seat of the Suzuki Swift. Let's check out the boot space and the engine of the car. Talking about the boot space of the new generation Suzuki Swift for 265 liters with the seats up and 589 liters if you pull down the seats. We are not able to do a bag test today, but we will pretend lifting a heavy bag and putting it into the boot. Um, you got a slight loading dip, but the boot space is down, so that's pretty good. Seats fold down 60-40 and you got a parcel tray. No real electric tailgate here. Your old fashioned buckle just fold it and close it down. And yep, that's pretty much it on the boot space of the new generation Suzuki Swift. Suzuki is known to pack the Swift with loads of features and safety tech. Let's take a look at the standout features. However, if you do want to go in detail about what's really different in the Swift's variant per variant, do remember to hit www.drivingdireview.com, take you straight to our website or hit the link in the description below and you'll get all the loadouts straight away. Talking about what's powering the Swift, you got a single engine which is a 1.2 mile hybrid petrol engine topped with 82 PS, 112 Nm of torque and can be had with a 5-speed manual, CVT. The Suzuki Swift just doesn't want to change its image. And why break, why break something that's not broken? That's how the words go. And that's the same for the Swift as well. What do you think about the new generation Swift? Let me know in the comment section below. Do remember to like, share, comment and stay tuned to Drive Media Reviews. As always, we have been filming this video today at Crown Crown Suzuki Handon. Do remember to come here to check out their cars and book appointments as well for test drives and service. Um, do remember to stay subscribed as always. I will see you guys in the next video real soon. Until then, goodbye.